This week we want to change up the format a little bit. Instead of having some conversation with, intermixed with uh, some questions for us to consider, uh, we're going to interject in here a teaching from uh, one of my professors, Mark Moore. Uh, he is the author of uh, the book Core 52, which we're using in our Sunday evening Bible study. And this is a teaching that he gave in discussion around Jesus' discussion on money in Matthew chapter 6. I, I think it would be very helpful as we consider uh, the, the goodness of giving, how God calls us and leads us into to, to using our money or using our financial resources uh, to bless the kingdom and to, uh, uh, as a means of discipleship and growing us to be like Jesus. After Mark's teaching, uh, there will be some questions for us to consider. Uh, the, they will come up uh, with, some, with a timer there at the bottom of the screen and uh, use that time to consider those questions appropriately. There are approximately 500 verses in the Bible about prayer. That's a lot. There are 2,300 verses in the Bible about money. <laughs> Why so much talk about money? Because, my opinion, money is far more spiritual than prayer. I know that sounds odd, but hear me out. When you pray, you are asking God to receive something. When you give to God, you are offering something. Which do you think will take you further, faster, spiritually receiving or giving i mean jesus said it himself it is more blessed to give than to receive and you know that's true just think about last christmas which gift meant most to you the one you received or the one you gave giving is flat out spiritual now look with all the talk in the bible about giving we can't say everything that needs to be said not here or now so let me just land on one core verse. It's actually three verses in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Three verses, two life-changing principles. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, Jesus says. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy, nor thieves break in and steal. Now here's the principle from these two verses. You have heard that it was said of money that you can't take it with you. True. But Jesus says you can send it on ahead. Now, I don't know how all the spiritual accounting works. But I do know this. That Jesus said what you give on earth can be credited to you in heaven. That's a game changer. And he goes on in the very next verse to a second major principle. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now, typically we think that we invest in things that our hearts are bought into, that our, our money follows our heart. Jesus said it's vice versa. Your heart follows your money. That what you invest into, you take interest in. So if this year your goal is to get closer to God, then why don't you put your money where your mouth is so that your heart can follow? It is a simple principle. Now, the question I suppose that a lot of people will ask is, how much do I need to give so that my heart will follow? Well, the biblical answer is 10%. It's called a tithe. And I know it's a broad discussion and it comes out of the Old Testament. Listen, Matthew 23, Jesus was pro-tithe and so am I. Here's why. Over 35 years in ministry, I have never met a single spiritual leader, man or woman, that I respect that did not begin with a tithe. This principle is universal and you will find it true in your own life as well. The tithe is the starting place for generosity. And if you want to grow spiritually, one of the most spiritual disciplines that you will ever come across is the act of giving. Now, I know that for many, 10% seems like a large amount. But I promise you, in spiritual mathematics, you will do more with 90% with God than 100% without God. We actually find the very same principle in Sabbath. We're told to rest one day out of seven, to give that day to God. That is actually 13% of your time. 
What is most important to all of us? Time and money. Time and money. You know what God says? I want approximately 10% of both. And if you give me the 10%, I will take you further, faster with the 90% that remains in your stewardship. So, the next time your pastor preaches about money, you should thank him for leading you spiritually.